this is Christy Villani from My Quilting Loft. How are you? Hey, we've got another great block coming up for our sew along, and this is going to be a really fun one. Um, this one is it's pretty easy. There's just some half square triangles and some quarter square triangles and a square. Like you could totally do that. See, it's right there. This one right here. Here, I'll give you a better view of it. This is our next block. What do you think? Is called the Swamp Angel. What do you think? Isn't it cute? And why they call it a Swamp Angel? I don't know. That's a weird name. <laughs> but anyways, it is number 97 in our quick and easy block tool book that we're following along with for our quilt here. And it's number 97 on page 109. And you're going to make four of them. You're going to make the 12 inch 12 inch size, four of them, 12 inches. Now, when they're, when you're done making them, this block, this block right here should measure 12 and a half inches because the finished size is 12 inches. So make sure that you've got that going on. Pick out some great colors to, I, I like how it makes like a little wreath looking thing. And I think that's really fun. So in your book, you're gonna wanna make a mark on the column here where it shows the 12 inch size so that you don't accidentally cut to the wrong size. Now, as you know, what I always say is the, the instructions in the book for cutting a half square triangle is gonna have you cut them a little bit small. I think bump that up a, get, a bit um, for the half square triangles, just a, an eighth of an inch, quarter inch bigger, let's see. I just go a quarter inch bigger, okay? And then that way you can trim it down and have an accurate block. And then for the quarter square triangles, you're gonna to wanna to make it a lot bigger because you've got a lot going on. So the size that it tells you to cut, go ahead and bump that up by three quarters of an inch. Because if you do that, you're gonna be able to trim things down and have accurate quarter square triangles. And that's, that's the goal. You want your blocks to look great, right? So. That tip will help you for sure. Um, another little tip is, is make sure that you have enough fabric to get us through the rest of these blocks. We have, I think we have three more blocks. I'm not 100% positive. We'll, we're, we're almost done. And this block is, this quilt is going to look amazing. I'm so excited to see everybody's quilt. So make sure that you are sharing on our Facebook group. So on my, go on Facebook, go to My Quilting Loft, click on the button that says join the group so that you can share pictures of all of the blocks that you're making. And then when everybody's quilts are done, I really, really hope that everybody will share, share pictures of your quilt once they're all done, but we're not there yet. We've got a few more to go. And so this is gonna be, I think, if I remember right, it's gonna be about 79 inches square. So, all right, so first thing you're gonna to wanna to do, let's get started, shall we? Okay, so first thing you're gonna to wanna to do is you're gonna to wanna to select which fabrics you're gonna want. And I have got plenty of these three colors left. And so that means that I can put more of those in my quilt and I'm excited about that. Um, so we're just gonna get them cut. I have marked in my book alongside the, um, if I can show you here real quick, I'm marking my book the with a friction pin. Can you see that? Okay. I've marked in my book with a friction pin there what colors I'm using for each each unit. So so see A and B here are going to make the half square triangles and the C and D units are your quarter square triangles and then your E is just your middle. And I like how this makes a wreath. And so to get that effect you're going to want to make sure that your D and your B fabrics are the same and then that will give you that wreath effect so let's get cutting these up and then we'll sew them and we'll be on our way so I'm going to cut my a and b together because they're the same size if it has a little bit of wrinkles in it you're going to want to press those out before you start cutting because you could mess with um, your accurate cutting now I just want to show you my favorite notion that I have is my Quilter Select Rotary Cutter. 
This thing is awesome. It's a little bit weighty, which is very nice. The handles are a little bit grippy here and it just fits in my hand really nice. And see this little button right here, you just push on that button and give it a tap and the blade comes down and then flip it over to the other side, give it a tap and the blade goes back inside. If you haven't got a Quilter Select rotary cutter yet, you're going to want to click the link in the box below and get yours ordered. They come in 45 millimeter or a 60 millimeter size. I'm going to go ahead and mark the back of my squares with my diagonal line from corner to corner because you may might not all have this diagonal seam tape on your machine if you don't you're going to want to get it um, it's awesome there are also other really cool gadgets out there that you can get that will help you mark those lines so that to save you the step of having to mark them but since you may not have it i'm going to go ahead and just mark my diagonal line there so you can see it anyway All right, let's put our fabrics right side together and then we're going to just mark a line from corner to corner on each of these and we're going to go ahead and do, and this is for our A and B for our half square triangles and while we're at it we're going to just go ahead and do the same thing with our C and D for our quarter square triangles because we're going to be doing the same thing. So just make it easy. All right, so we've got our diagonal lines drawn on there and we can take it to the machine. We're gonna just sew a quarter an inch on either side of that line. This is what I love about the quarter inch seam tape because then I can follow along, follow the point up that line there and make sure that that stays straight. And we'll just chain piece these in there Line that up. Now we're just that line that we drew we're just going to cut right on that line so you can use a sharpie if you want you can use any kind of a marking tool to mark that line as long as it's kind of a fine point oops you need to Okay, then you're just gonna give these a press, press them open. Set my seam. Press. Start with the your dark fabric on top. It makes it easy because then you can just press the seam, flip it open. Yeah. 
have square triangles. Now, then these are, those half square triangles are done. We'll just trim those up. And then our quarter square triangles are halfway done. Okay, so now to finish up our quarter square triangles, you're just gonna want to line them up this way. Now you wanna make sure that, you know, peel the corner back in that you have it looking like this. You, you don't wanna do it this way so that when you peel it back, you've got the same thing. You don't want that. You want it like this. And you wanna line those seams up next to each other, make sure that you have those nice and snug up against each other so you don't end up with a gap. If you end up with a gap, you're gonna wish it didn't because that's no fun. So I'm gonna put a pin there. Same thing right here with this guy. So you can you can feel with your fingers when it's lined up in there, right? And that together, and then we're gonna draw our line from corner to corner, going perpendicular to our seam. Then we're gonna sew a quarter inch on either side of that one. Okay, now that those we've sewn a quarter inch on either side of that line, trim on the line that we drew, split that open, cross my fingers that I did this right, <laughs> and then when I open these up, oh good, and look at that, see the points all come together nicely, that has to do with before I even sew it, making sure those seams are lined up next to each other, so we're going to just give these a quick press. And then we'll trim them down. Always set those seams. Oh, here, okay, so this seam has a little bit of a, a bump here, a ridge, so I'm gonna press that out. I don't want that. Okay, so you, you oh, there's two of them. So your quarter square triangles and your half square triangles, these are like in just every block, just about, like either one or the other or both, or, and if you can make these, 
you can make anything you can make any block these are just like so foundational the, these two if you're going to learn any any block any unit of a block half square triangle quarter square triangle and you're golden i promise okay so now we're just going to trim these up trim those dog ears off and square them up okay so um important here there's a diagonal line on the ruler. Line the diagonal line of my ruler up with the diagonal line of my block. Now I've, I'm gonna trim these down to four and a half inches, but my four and a half inch line here and here on the left side and on the bottom side are, are, are shorter. They're, they're inside the block because I'm gonna flip it around and trim the other side. there now once I've done that now on this side my diagonal line right there on that diagonal line of, line of my seam and then now my four and a half inch are on the left and bottom seams or not seams but edges Let's repeat that with of these Did they do that side already? I must have. Okay, so now when I'm going to trim up a quarter square triangle, it is a little bit different because I need to make sure that that point stays in the middle. So in order to do that, I need to use their, because I'm going to cut this down to four and a half inches. So half of four and a half is two and a quarter. So I want to find a, a dash mark on my ruler that is where the two and a quarter inches is and I want to light make sure that that is lined up with the middle point and that my diagonal line on my ruler is going diagonal across one of the seams here. See if I had a four and a half inch ruler I could just line those up. Oh wait a minute. Yeah see how this is a five inch ruler if this block were going to be five inches I would just line it up just like that and trim all the way around but I don't have a four and a half inch ruler. I should order one. I need to get one. They have them. But anyway, since I don't have one, I'm going to show you how to do it this way. So like I said, the two and a quarter mark on there and a, one diagonal line with one of my seams there. Move those so I don't accidentally cut those. That would be bad. That would be really bad. Okay, then flip it around and now, now I want to make sure that that two and a quarter mark is still lined up with my middle point here and my four and a half inch line is even with my left and bottom edges there. And, and voila, quarter square triangle. So I'm just going to finish do the rest of those and then I'll meet and then we will line up our block and get it sewn together. Uh, this would be so much easier if I had a four and a half inch square ruler. I'm going to, I'm going to get me one of those. Now I, you know, you ever wonder why some people have all of the rulers and all of the sizes? You never know what size you're going to need, you're going to be making. You want to have those handy. All right, so now I just want to 
making sure I'm following along with my diagram in the book that I have these all in the right direction. That looks right. <laughs> now make sure you don't have these going the wrong way because if you have them going the wrong way, not making the block that I want. So no, 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 so this. There, see now, now it looks like a wreath. That's what I want. I think these would be so pretty with Christmas colors. Since it kind of looks like a wreath, I think it would be fun to make a quilt out, a Christmas quilt out of using that block. What do you think? So in the comments below, tell me what are some other projects that you would make using this block? Remember, it's called the Swamp Angel. Does anybody know why it's called the Swamp Angel? If you know why it's called that, please go ahead and put that in the comments too. I don't know, but it's sure pretty. I think it should be called the Wreath Angel or something. But Anyway, it's number 97. So we've got these lined up. So now we're just gonna sew, sew them all together and it will be done. Oh, I should put away my mess here. Okay, so this, this seam here and this seam here, you wanna make sure that those nest nicely. Sure that you press your top row and your bottom row the seams going that way and then your middle ones with the seams going in and you line them up almost they'll lock they'll nest they'll fit right next to each other however you want to say it That was a close one. Did you see that? I almost put my row on upside down. Don't do that. <laughs> okay, so almost done. So now we just wanna make sure that I use pins at this part. And here where we have points coming together, wanna make sure we don't chop off our points. So we're going to want to make sure that we're not sewing over. Can you see that right here? See that where it makes like an X there? We don't want to sew this side of that X. We want to sew just right directly through it, and if not like short of it. And
Okay, so what do you think? This is such a pretty block. This weird name, Swamp Angel, hello, but a really pretty block. I think this would be a great Christmas wreath block. And I think it'd be fun to be used in a lot of different things. And this is gonna be a great one in our mystery quilt. So anyway, I uh, wanna tell you all, thank you again for tuning into my tutorials. Make sure that you're sharing with a friend. Hit the like button, hit the subscribe button, hit the little bell that notifies you next time a tutorial is put out. Thank you for being patient with me while this one took a little bit of extra time. This was my third try, <laughs> my third day of filming this. So, hey, <sighs> filming, YouTube, filming YouTube tutorials, running a quilt shop, having a Facebook live sale every Saturday morning at 10 o'clock. And you know, that's what I do because I love it and it's fun. And because I love meeting all of you and seeing what you're making. Um, so you guys all have a really great day, but make sure you set your alarm every Saturday morning at 10 o'clock Pacific time. So if you're in a different time zone than I am here in Oregon, you just accordingly. But that Facebook live sale is a lot of fun. So anyway, you guys have a great day and thanks again. And we will see you soon. Bye now.